it's been said that uh, our next speaker and I had a had a bit of a feud going on. So what I did to get back to him is I'm going to have him follow David stay. <clears throat> uh, what I'm asked to come up now is uh, Eric Guthrie from the Laser Tech Museum, and he's going to talk to you about the, uh, the new photon wing and the photon collection up there and, and other stories. So Eric Guthrie, everybody. That was history right there, by the way. Um, for those of you who don't know me, first I have to say thank you for, for having this event. Um, I've been in the laser tech business about 20 years. Um, I'm known for being a little bit outrageous uh, in the industry, but uh, I started the International Laser Tech Association um, and years ago, I kind of got this idea as I traveled around the world and I kept collecting stuff. And I had a little bit of stuff here, and a little bit of stuff there, and a bit of stuff there. And next thing you know, I had a basement of stuff. And then after that, I had a room full of stuff. A lot of you guys know this feeling already, right? And so I'm talking that at that time I left the ILTA, I'd gone to work for a laser tech manufacturer, still had a lot of stuff. And so we got the idea to create a laser tech museum. Now, the museum is a generous word. Um, one, there's really no legal definition to the word museum. Uh, so we had basically display cases. A company who built laser tag arenas built some five display cases. And we just put a few packs in and we said, ta-da, museum. Um, and, and over time, we kept collecting more and more stuff. And I've been fortunate enough now uh, to travel all over the world. I have smuggled laser tag equipment out of China. Uh, I've gone to New Zealand to see the most beautiful country in the world and, and listen to uh, the second laser tag company that was the second most influential. But i got to tell you, I've got to combine both stories together and I can't compete with David. But years ago in Dallas, Texas, I was working the International Laser Tag Association booth. And I had always heard of Photon. I'm not one of you guys who played first generation Photon. I came in and, and played Mark Store, where, where Mark's at. But I played Mark Store. Uh, uh, years ago here in Laurel. But uh, so I'm in Dallas, Texas, and I'm standing in front of the ILTA booth, and up walks this gentleman, and he looks at me, and on his name badge, it says George Carter. <laughs> and he says, why are there 32 laser tag manufacturers at this trade show? And I said, Mr. Carter, I've known your name. I've just never had the pleasure to meet you. And so George and I hit it off, we talked, and I kind of gave him the whole story, and I've been tracking the history. And so George and I have become great friends over the years, um, and, and uh, I, now, luckily, there aren't 32 manufacturers anymore, a lot of them have faded away. And then that leads me back to the museum. As these laser tag companies disappeared, I kept having a lot of their equipment. I just had a pack here, literature there. And today, the Laser Tag Museum, if you've not checked out the website, please look at lasertagmuseum.com. But we're privileged to have um, laser tag systems you've never heard of. I mean, companies that you didn't know existed. Um, and some of them are really influential in the industry. Um, I also have to admit that our photon section just wasn't that strong. Um, I'm an old Qzar guy. I'm a zone guy. I like, believe it or not, Laser Storm. So it was easy for me to gather a lot of this stuff. Where did Logan go when I said laser storm? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, so I really didn't have a lot of photon items. Um, I picked up a couple of packs, I think off of eBay, a couple of pods from eBay. Um, and then years ago, Vinny and I had a conversation. And Vinny donated a lot of items from Kenilworth. And so that really kind of yeah, got Kenilworth. going. Yay, Woo! Vinny. Kenilworth. <laughs> George, uh, George and I, have, uh, uh, George's been to my house, I've been to his house, he, almost every time he comes to Indianapolis, he brings me something really cool and unique and different, um, so that's added to the museum, and then, and I'll go to wrap this up because I know we're raising that time, but then, strangely enough, I don't do Facebook well, I have seven friends on Facebook, and I really am trying to get rid of half of them, don't laugh at them. <laughs> believe it or not, I'm really kind of antisocial, but anyway, so some perv is stalking me on Facebook, Sorry, Chris. I didn't and, <laughs> <laughs> so, so I get this, I get this, uh, this Facebook, I don't know, I don't even know what it's called, but they like message you and it beeps at you and, and it's Chris Drago. And Chris says, I think I have a few items for you. And I said, oh really? And then goes beep, 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 beep. And he just sends me photo after photo after photo of items that he has. Um, and Chris has been incredibly wonderful. 
he's donated a large number of items. He's loaned a large number of items here on this trip. Um, uh, Chris has a partner in this called Mike Murphy. Is that correct? Yep. Mike Murphy. Uh, so you will see that while we've not been that great at Photon, we will be much better at Photon. Um, Vinny's brother, Paul, I don't know where you're at in the room, and his cohorts um, have donated a, a, a phaser station. Yeah, Paul. Uh, yeah, Paul. Yeah. So what I'm going to go, so that we, we can get back on schedule, is please check out lasertechmuseum.com. Um, I am still looking for some of the cool, rare things. The museum is a free admission, non-revenue uh, museum. There's no money involved in this whatsoever. It is definitely done as a labor of love. I absolutely love it. Uh, the industry, and so uh, you know, if you've got something of interest, I'd be happy to cover the shipping kind, uh, you know, c uh, cost to get it to me, so we can get it on display. We rever everything. Uh, there's a gentleman here, Cody, uh, better known as the intern. Uh, that's his job. He just takes care of everything that we have at the museum. Uh, so, with that said, I want to say thank you again. Uh, it's been amazing. I hope I do all of you guys uh, uh, justice in being able to preserve the heritage of. Photon at the museum, uh, and with that said, I'm ready to turn it over to Jason. And unless there's any questions. <laughs> yes, yes. Hey, where's the museum located? Well, look at that. I don't even need to be up here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, man. So, so let me, if I'll, I'll expand on that, though. So it is located in Louisville, Kentucky. It's at a place called Laser Blaze, and, and it is formerly known as Photon Louisville. That is still a 10,000 square foot Photon. Alpha field, am I correct on that? Yeah. Alpha. And it's like with the minus a bunker. Yes, yes, yes. So it's modified. Um, and and Jack's done a few more things to it. But what had happened is that um, the way you walk into this facility, it's in a strip center, and when you walk in, you walk into a hall about as long as this right here. And um, uh, Jack had, uh, for years, I pestered Jack for the hallway. But then finally, about five years ago, he called me up. He says, Eric, if you want the hallway, it's yours. So we have custom display cases that are about seven feet tall uh, on display. They're, they're each uh, case, I think, is 24, 27 feet long. Um, so it's, it's really impressive now if you go through there. So uh, any other questions? All right, I'm going to turn this back over to Jason. Thank you.